Hey guys, what's up? My name's John. I'm a former flight attendant turned travel professional. I own my own travel agency and now I'm kind of becoming a travel commentator. Our girl, Foodie Beauty, has decided to travel to Thailand again. She has been teasing travel for, I feel like, a few weeks now. And I wanted to go over a couple of her travel videos. If you're thinking that I look a little rough right now, I did just wake up. And we're going to do a little get ready with me as I react uh, to her video. Sorry for the like black part of this. It's just the best way I can set up my camera right now. Being that I am also traveling, I am currently in London and just getting ready for the day, but there is a lot of foodie beauty to catch up on. It's interesting to hear her talk about plus size traveling. And I do this just because I think Anna Glitter and Lasers travels a lot more than foodie does. It's interesting to see kind of the difference in advice that they give too. So we're going to break some of that down and just see who may I would recommend um, to go to for their plus size travel advice. Are we going to go with foodie or do I recommend glitter and lasers? So let's go ahead and take a look at this video. I'll be getting ready as we as we go as well. And this is my little microphone. So cute. My little travel microphone because I did not want to bring my whole setup with me. I'm trying to travel lighter. Let's go ahead and start the video. I do have her on 1.5 speed just because that's the only way lately that I can handle foodie. And then I'll have her original video video linked in the description below so if you want to check out that okay let's get started i don't like the situation i'm in i wish i was able to change it a bit uh, i didn't so this is the situation i have to deal with how am i going to make it comfortable how am i going to make it good for myself you know because it's crunch time and i'm i'm just not ready i'm just not ready this is just gonna be she's so dramatic <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to another Just video. Trying to get those so keywords in there. How to travel is fat. Going to be talking about traveling as an obese person, um, somebody who's severely overweight like myself, and how I manage to travel long distances, how I manage to travel at all as an overweight person. Uh, I'm so sorry, I forgot to say the title of this video. This is her. I'm not so ready to travel and bigger than ever. So she recorded this right before she left for Thailand. Um, and I'm sure that there are a lot of obese people out there who would love to travel but they're just afraid to for certain reasons, uh, you know, albeit the stigma that goes along with um, being overweight, you know, the reception from public. I'm not sure how it's, you know, overweight people are treated in different countries to the actual logistics of traveling, like the physical part, how it's hard um, mobility wise or plane traveling and stuff like that. Will you fit in the seats and little fears, you know, fears that overweight people tend to have when it comes to traveling. So I will say that I do like the fact that she's having a purpose behind this video, even though it's definitely foodie and there's always selfish intentions behind it, more so than other videos that she does. That is one thing. I wish she would move into more um, if she's going to be bragging about how much she travels and all of that. Definitely give some purpose to your videos because so many times we're just sitting there watching her eat, in which there's no purpose. About my personal experience, in particular in regards to my current trip coming up now i will say i've been saying for you know months i want to get ready for the trip i want to lose some weight for the trip because i 100 percent don't dispute the fact that you know if i lose weight my mobility will increase greatly i'll feel better i'll be able to do a lot more but as it turns out i've been having been struggling a lot and i haven't been able to meet my goal and um but i'm still traveling um you know we have the tickets from a long time ago uh the hotel booked from a long time ago and um i still had a lot of i feel like she hasn't even been trying so a lot of people have been calling her out and she's in her last few videos i think she's pretty much straight up said that she's given up and she is just not going to be cycling anymore which is part of the cycle funny enough i will say when you lose weight the overall travel experience becomes so much better and you're so much more comfortable and there's no way that she can do the traveling that she talks about staying in the condition that she's in not only is she self-proclaimed you know overweight obviously her health in general is not good her diabetes she's having a hard time controlling that she's been open about that some days she's open about it some days she's not which only causes confusion to the audience i digress it's really easy for her to always say these things but she needs to actually do it and i think her content would actually shift as well as she starts to feel better and i think we'll get more travel and better travel content out of her so that is my hope for her because I would love to see more travel content, obviously. And I just can't stand her other stuff when she's just sitting and eating. That's kind of my opinion on the matter. A lot of fun when I went to Thailand. How I did it, basically, um, I do still have some anxieties, of course, um, you know, like everyone else. But um, I know I might look super tired because I have allergies and I have no makeup on. Uh, I makeup on right now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, almost time yeah, to travel and I have not lost any weight. I've gained some weight. So it will be a bit harder on me. But 
um, there are some ways that you can still be comfortable while traveling as an obese person, as comfortable as you can be. Uh, obviously, losing the weight would have been ideal for me. Um, maybe I can, you know, lose some weight while I'm there, continue to try. We'll see. Uh, every day is a fight, a struggle for me. And so, yeah, but that's a topic for another time. So um, the plane, uh, the plane ride about fitting on the planes used to be one of my biggest fears as an overweight person. And um, I can tell you that most of the time, there was a couple times I got lucky, but I've flown from Canada to Kuwait to the Middle East, 13 hour flight, um, 14 hour, 14 hours in the plane many times. And most of the time I have to sit beside somebody. And by many times, I think she's done the trip back and forth now. Well, I, I think she's gone back and forth a total of three times. I think she also is going to experience flights that are busier as she's going from Canada to Kuwait back and forth just because there are going to be less flights going in and out of Canada from Kuwait. Her other flights that she does when she's going Middle East to, let's say, Thailand or other Middle Eastern countries are always less busy. One thing, there's probably not a ton of travel going on in the Middle East right now. There's probably a lot of business travel. And then, so that depends on like, the day she goes if it's going to be busier or not plus there's a lot more flights going in and out in that region and a lot more flight options so flights are going to be a little bit less busy which is probably why she runs into the fact that she can get an open seat next to her during those types of flights she's only been to thailand once so it acts like she comes across as this big traveler but she has traveled a, a lot for the average person i would say but she's i wouldn't say she's in this category of like a travel professional and knows what she's doing quite yet give her you know probably 20 plus more flights just depends on your body type your body shape more than how much you weigh like i'm an apple shape and you know from the front i still look big but i don't look as big i'm not as big from this way as i am sideways um so if you are pear shaped you're, you carry most of your weight in your hips um you're gonna have a harder time depending on your size with the airplane seats that are very narrow uh, as opposed to somebody who carries most of their weight in the abdomen you will probably need a seatbelt extender, but you can actually order one online. Just Google search seatbelt extender for the um, either universal one or a particular airline you're looking for. They do sell them on Amazon for pretty cheap. Now, I don't mind asking. That's if you're if you're not okay with asking for a seatbelt extender. I don't mind asking for a seatbelt extender again on the plane. Okay, she is correct about this because you can get a, sorry, I look crazy with my <laughs> contour on right now. You can get a seatbelt extensions on Amazon or like you can buy them from places, but what you need to make sure is that they are FAA approved if you are in the United States, just because technically you're not supposed to use that piece of equipment if it's not FAA approved. Um, that also goes for car seats as well. So if people are bringing infants on board and they're gonna use a car seat, it needs to be FAA approved as well. So technically if you're getting a seatbelt extension, I kind of feel like she'd be the type to just get off a team or get like the cheapest one. She needs to make sure that it's approved within the countries that she's flying in. And I'm not sure what the Middle Eastern laws are, but you technically need to be using the equipment that is approved for that airline or the region that you're in. That being said, I don't think a flight attendant's really going to come check your seatbelt extension to make sure that it is qualified to be used on that flight, to be honest. I would be surprised if anyone has said that they've had a flight attendant check that before. Car seats, yes, they do check that. A seatbelt extension, probably not, but it's probably in your best interest to get something that is approved <laughs> by the airline or the federation that oversees the airline rules and regulations and policy just because that's going to probably be the safest and you don't want to get in a situation where you hit turbulence and uh, your seatbelt extension breaks. You go flying out of your seat or something that can be very dangerous, obviously. And they direct me to my seat. There's usually a flight attendant that is in the aisles. So I just ask them, may I have a seatbelt extender? You can even bring them to the back, ask to talk to them privately and ask for one. And it's usually, um, they're very easy to use. You don't have to worry about that. They just clip into the seatbelt. So um, yeah, I'm just used to it. I'm not really embarrassed by that. Um, there's quite a few other people that need seatbelt extenders on the flights usually um if not you're the only one that's fine um you know just you'll probably need one um if you're a certain size or certain weight but it's not always weight based so to say if i'm this much weight will i fit on plane it just depends on the dimensions it depends on your body type it depends on a lot of things so if i am lucky and i don't have anyone seated beside me i usually just lift up the other armrest for more comfort depending on the airline you can also uh, for an additional fee so it is required to be down in the aisle so if she's sitting in the aisle she needs to have the aisle armrest down pulpy said that he thought that the armrest needed to be down it's only the aisle armrest for takeoff and landing to make sure that that one is down it is recommended that they're down during takeoff and landing though just because it helps you be in your seat it helps stabilize you when that happens and those are the most critical times of the flight i do kind of like the fact that she is kind of giving advice right now so it's just a little bit different vibe 
than her complaining about the flights and eating while she's trying to tell a story or it's just a little bit of a different vibe it's a lot more entertaining book an extra seat beside you i know a few airlines do that i think some american airlines some international airlines it just depends so you can also ask at the ticket counter um when you're uh, getting your boarding pass you can ask um you know are there any seats left because most people will have their seats by then are there any seats left there's an empty seat beside um another thing is i love the um window seat but the aisle seat actually gives you more room so you can ask at the ticket counter i would recommend that you kind of check online as well as you're going because of technology nowadays you can really check to see if there's open seats yourself it is always good to check when you get there just to make sure because sometimes there's seats that are blocked off and only the agents can see that and it might show that someone's in the seat but really there's nobody in the seat on a passenger viewing screen but only the agents can see that i think the other thing i wanted to address was because i did watch pulpy when he was reviewing this video i didn't actually watch her video playing through but he said that why wouldn't you put put in your record ahead of time for the flight attendants that you needed a seatbelt extension or just like why wouldn't you say that you needed a seatbelt extension prior call prior so that the flight attendants can see that that they you need it and i'm going to be honest with you that is not a thing the flight attendants cannot see your record locator and the notes on it so they can't see your reservations for those types of things really the only way is to bring your own on or ask it would be great if there was a way to kind of communicate that ahead of time but there's no way that they are going to know who you are for one thing they might know what seat you were originally assigned but if you change seats their records might not update quick enough for you to see that while you're boarding that's just not a thing so i just wanted to address that because i was like that would be nice to have that option to kind of let people know ahead of time that you're going to need a seatbelt extension but that is not really realistic or a reality that can quite happen yet unfortunately there's just no way for the flight crew to see that because you can kind of whenever they're not doing dinner service or you'll get knocked out by a car but you can kind of put your legs out a bit into the aisle way. You can spill out a bit into the aisle way is what I'm looking to say. So I've come, become more accustomed with the... I've been really critical on Anna for saying this as well. So um, it's only fair that I'm critical of foodie. I do not agree with the fact that you can take up some of the aisle when you are larger or plus size. I understand that it can be more comfortable, but if you're taking up the aisle, it's very uncomfortable for people to walk by. You're technically paying for the space in your seat. You're not paying for the aisle. I've seen so many people get injured from carts coming by because they're leaning out in the aisle those carts are very heavy especially when they're full and the responsibility is on you to stay out of the aisle because you are warned to keep the aisles clear and the flight attendants are working so they need to go up and down the aisle personally have even tripped and fell when i was walking backwards bringing a cart up and someone was kind of like spilling out into the aisle feet in the aisle and all that i fell and twisted my ankle it's just something that the average person i don't think thinks about how much more difficult that makes the flight attendant's job and it is unsafe if there's a, a emergency that happens the flight attendants do run up and down the aisle there's like a certain medical emergency they need to grab medical equipment or you know if they got for a bit of fire or something they need to run up and down the aisle it's just very dangerous stay out of the aisle i hate this type of advice that being said like i am someone who loves the aisle specifically just because it's like the aisle or the window but i do like the aisle because i like to have control if i get up go to the lav or uh just to walk them down the aisle to get a stretch real quick especially on the long haul flights so i do like the aisle for that purpose especially even when i'm on my laptop or something in the aisle i have to be very cautious about like my elbows being out and things like that just because i don't want to be spilling into the aisle when they're going by there are times you know obviously where you can maybe be a little more relaxed and have part of the aisle as well i understand that that is probably going to be a better choice than spilling into another passenger seat the excuse that you can take up the aisle space from a standpoint coming from someone who is a cabin crew the aisle is not your part of your seat it is not your seat you do not pay for the aisle space and that is not for you to spill out onto essentially there's my little spiel on that <laughs> some people really get on me for being so harsh on that they just don't know what it's like when you have constant people in the aisle that is my opinions only in that the travel that way and i'm not too too nervous about that it's not as long of a flight this time as going to canada so it's something i can endure um as for the mobility part because you know airports are hard to maneuver you know even for a fit person they're exhausting if you you know have to be running around when you're tired and traveling all day so I have a lot of health issues and um, I do have mobility issues because of my weight. Uh, somehow on travel day, I'm able to just like suck it up, but it is hard. It is not, it's harder for sure. It's more difficult. Um, I get winded more easily. My lower back starts hurting, um, you know, just those kind of things. So um, 
if the airport has a service where you can request, like for certain people, you know, you can request a wheelchair. You can re Sometimes I approach these carts that are driving around and just like beg them for a ride to my gate. And they usually do oblige, except when I went to Germany, they kind of just like said no. So, <laughs> um, but here in the Middle East, they always have the complimentary service. I feel like whenever she has the chance to diss the West, she definitely takes that opportunity nowadays, which is really interesting. Now, I don't know if she's nervous that she can't fit in the wheelchair and the fact that it might be tough for someone to push her around in the wheelchair. But as far as making sure that she has an easier way for her to get into transfer to other flights is to request a wheelchair and they can get her from point A to B. And then they would typically what happens is they get you on the wheelchair, get you to a spot where you can get on a cart. And then there's a wheelchair waiting for you on the other side. Usually is what happens. I just think that would be an easier way for her to get around for now until she gets into a better place where it's not such a struggle for her to walk around because I do know she really struggles with that part of it. And I think it would make her overall travel experience a lot better. That being said, I do think that her being pushed to walk a little bit and to get some exercise and stuff during this time is good for her, but in a sense of her health and potentially having something happen while she's on the flight or at the airport, I think it's definitely a time to play it safe or to play it safer. I don't really have an issue with her wanting to be on the carts and using the carts for that kind of thing. I just don't like when she complains about it and complains about using them because technically she can walk from point A to B, although it's hard for her. Again, that is kind of what they're there for. And I'd much rather her like play it safe and not have a medical episode than for her to have a medical episode during these times. I'm really curious. What was the actual story? <laughs> um, did they not have space? Do you have to request it in Germany? It's just kind of like what is the actual story i also have had a really hard flight transfer in germany before and i had to run from point a to b it was absolutely awful it was during a lot of strikes that were going on and i was uh, heading back to london after a river cruise and i had to run from one gate to the other and it was so far and you had to go through um, immigration and i remember that there was steps involved and there was no way even half population would have been able to make it. I barely made it and I'm not super obese, but I'm also not like super, super fit either. So I think for her traveling, she's usually not pressed for time to get to certain places. She's kind of just traveling to renew her visa or I would say just to travel, but it typically seems to be for renewing her visa. She's not like trying to get to a certain place for a specific reason, so much so that she's on a time crunch or a schedule. Booking her flights with plenty of time in between, I think is also going to work to her advantage so she doesn't have to stress and worry about that. She can take her time and that would be kind of like my recommendations for her to utilize wheelchair if she can and then to make sure to allow herself when she's booking to have plenty of time in between flights even in the Air montreal airport they do have a little train station you can wait at and someone will take you to your gate if you're, dis you're disabled you have mobility issues or you're elderly feel free to use those um but as for me i try to walk it unless i'm really really struggling then i'll ask for a ride so but being on the plane for a long time you know it actually does feel good to walk a bit after even though you know it's hard for me so um i'm gonna try to walk it if it's really tough on me i'll try to find somebody to take me but in the, what i usually do is just kind of airports have a lot of seating usually so i use those moving walkways you know to take a break i just stand on them and let them push me down the way um i also find some seating somewhere uh so i take some walks and then i take some breaks so taking breaks are very very important um uh, staying hydrated i always always have water on me actually right now talking i'm pretty thirsty so <laughs> that but i know she gets concerned about using the restroom sure in the aircraft um, for example at the doha airport here there in qatar not here but in qatar they have water stations that you can refill your water bottles for free so be uh, on the lookout for those near the washrooms um so that's what i do so that's how i treat my mobility issues even when i was in thailand um Sometimes I didn't have a hard time walking around and I could walk around for like, a, you know, sometimes an hour, maybe two hours, even without um, sitting down. But that was like just walking around, looking at things, not like vigorous walking. But sometimes I would be tired on certain days and I would walk and then I would sit, uh, walk and sit and just find anywhere to sit. Like one time we were walking uh, on the street and it was just really humid and I was getting exhausted. And so um, I found these um, stairs, this, these steps um, leading to a business building. And I just sat on them for a minute, you know, and. I was okay to get up again and walk. So taking people. breaks is very important. Um, know your limits with your mobility to make it more enjoyable for you. You know, ideally, like for me, I don't like the situation I'm in. I wish I was able to change it a bit, um, but I didn't. So this is the situation I have to deal with. How am I going to make it? That's one thing I think Glitter and Lasers really struggles with saying is knowing your limits. Just because she is the type of person that will push herself or try to come across as that she can do a lot of these things when it's in her best interest to maybe take a step back and slow it down a little bit. Knowing your limits is very, very important. 
important and can help maybe avoid a medical situation or a situation where you get very sick or fall and have, yeah, it's in your best interest to know your physical limits and then listen to it and stay within your boundaries. I would say sitting down on steps, um, if that's the only option you have, yeah, but just don't be in people's way. That's the only thing. Stay out of the way of people on like stairs or something. I can just, I, I'm just picturing like, cause Thailand gets so busy and more of the stairs that I had been on were like temples and stuff where it was a lot of people going up and down. So I just can't picture her trying to sit in the middle of all that. Definitely finding a spot where you can relax and slow down. I think Sala kind of really pushes her more than she would want to, which is kind of good, but also she needs to make sure that she stays within her her limits so she's not going overboard and putting herself in a situation where she's going to require medical attention. That, that's never good when you, you need the medical attention on a trip. Make it comfortable. How am I going to make it um, good for myself, you know? Another thing I find, I don't know if like all obese people um, have this problem, but I'm always hot and I'm always sweaty. So I make sure to have a, I don't have it around here with me, but a personal I'm always fan hot and sweaty sure too when I'm traveling. Make sure your personal fan is with you it's at all really times, annoying. especially in hotter countries. It's a lifesaver, especially walking but around airports. But I'm also airports walking very fast you know, from place to place too because sweaty. I just want to So yeah, that's pretty much how I deal with my mobility issues. I just make sure that I have taken enough breaks. And I choose activities and scope out the areas on Google and check out like images on Google image to make sure that there's enough seating. Like you have to know your limits. Like if you, you can push yourself, but to a certain extent, you don't want it to become dangerous and you don't want to over... I don't feel like she actually does that much research. It's the same like with glitter and lasers. She says that, but I feel like there's always more research that could be done. I don't think she goes that far into checking those kind of details out all the time unless she's super, super concerned about it. But she is self-proclaimed really lazy. It's just something I can't see her doing. It's a good recommendation though, however. Chantal will take your own advice. Overdo it and become sick uh, abroad and have to worry about going to the hospital and stuff like that. So like, just be sure to know your limitations. Um, it's very important. I sometimes push myself too much and then, you know, my muscles are sore or I have blisters or um, I just don't really feel too well. I feel like I'm going to pass out. So I don't want to get to that point ever again. Um, it's better to take your time um, and just have a seat if you really need to. So yeah, that's a, even if that means going to the airport earlier or planning more time in between, like finding a flight that, you know, instead of having an hour time, let's say your transit, if, if you... So I can't talk today. What I do is I usually choose flights with a longer transit time if I have to take two, if there's a stop in between, basically, if I have to take two flights, there's two legs, because I know that an hour is not going to be enough time to rush for me. So um, to avoid that stress, I'd rather have a longer transit time than have to rush and I, like overdo it for myself. So longer connection slow, time, you know, naps that I, I use to deal with my weight issues when traveling. Um, and it can be, you know, you can have a normal time or near normal time anyway, if you just choose things that if you know your limits, if you know where you're going, if there's going to be seating and stuff like that. Um, another thing that um, I do is I, you know, use transportation. So like, um, I make sure that we go as close to the place as possible, get drop, dropped off as close as possible. I don't want to exhaust myself, use all of my energy reserves and capabilities walking to the place and then having to do a few more hours of walking around. So I make sure to, you know, it's kind of an, a little bit of extra money. For example, when we were in Thailand, you know, the metro was a lot cheaper than taking a bolt or a taxi, but the bolts and taxis in Thailand were not actually that expensive. So it didn't really make much of a difference, which is something I liked, you know, no matter how long the ride is, they had a set price and it was usually only maybe 50 bucks more than taking the metro or something like that. So um, I took in Thailand, I took a lot of the taxis. I don't think we ever used public transportation because it was hot. It was humid. I think they tried once um, and I she had a meltdown. I wouldn't be able to walk too, too far, especially you know, like where our hotel was. It was kind of. She does bring up a good point that I think she can also take her advice a little bit more on this too. <laughs> Making sure that you pay for the thing that you um, know is going to make you the most comfortable. So her, instead of taking the public transportation that she is really uncomfortable with and doesn't really work for her, paying a little bit extra to do the taxi. I think she could follow that same advice when it comes to flying to pay for the extra seat. I think she mentioned it would only be a, an extra $80, which is a lot. But when it comes down to you taking up someone else's seat and just the difference between you being comfortable or not, it's very important that you pay the extra to make sure that you are accommodated appropriately. Um, the same thing goes for like someone who's tall. They know that they need to pay for an upgraded seat or first class or, you know, just a seat with extra legroom. I think the same thing should apply if you're needing more space as well. That's just 
how I view it. I will be in Paris in a few days and I know my mom isn't a huge walker just with back surgery she's had. So we are going to be doing a little bit more Uber in the area than walking, which I would typically myself walk more, but just to make sure that we are able to see what we want to see and not um, overextend ourselves, we're going to be Ubering a little bit. It's just taking those types of steps when you're traveling to make sure that you can really ensure that you have a, a much better time as well, because the more miserable you are, the more miserable your experience is. That just goes with saying kind of out of the way so i didn't want to exhaust myself knowing that i'm not like a normal healthy person and and that's another thing no like know know who you are and know your limits that's so important and don't be ashamed like don't be um comparing yourself to a, a healthier person and saying like keep it i keep it in the back of the, my mind that yes i would like to be like that i would like to be healthier okay but at the same time while i'm living this i have to accept what i am at the moment and try to enjoy myself regardless so i'm not saying be proud of your limitations but just don't let them deter your traveling and ruin it for you don't be like ashamed like oh i have to take you know i need i have these mobility issues i need certain things like don't be ashamed of that and don't try to be like act like a thinner more in shape person and do what they do just know what you need to do for you and know your limitations you know, um like for me i couldn't um i don't think i could fathom like taking public transportation walking for a bit getting on another metro walking for a bit like i have anxiety issues um and i also have mobility issues so for me that just wasn't ideal so i just took the public i mean i took the taxis um the grab the bolts excuse me and just have them drop you off right in front of the place and then you can enjoy more of your time actually doing the activity instead of worrying about all those anxieties that you have being an overweight person with mobility issues and, and just getting there you know so yeah you can save a few bucks but for me it's just wasn't feasible so yeah we put up the extra money for that the transportation was important so even if you have to balance something else like if you, if you have less shopping money to spend more on transportation if it makes your trip more enjoyable that way then you do that it's kind of like just checks and balances kind of deal so yeah so anyways um there's plenty of activities you can do that don't require, you know, hiking in a mountain and stuff like that. Things that you're just not physically able to do. You can find things, you know, just an equal amount of things that you are physically able to do and still have fun on your trip as an overweight person. So I hope that like quells some of your anxieties. If you're overweight and you've always dreamed of traveling and you're waiting to lose weight to do it, there's always ways you can travel. So don't don't worry about that. Um, you can follow along, you know, our travel journey for more. We also I also have some travel um, videos on our Salah and Chantel channel. You can check it out. The links in the description. And I also have some channels in my. Uh, I also have some videos on my channel as well. I'll try to link them in the description as well. So you can see how I traveled um, throughout various times and didn't think I could do it either, but I did. And each time you, you know, do something you don't think you can, you get stronger and it gets easier to do. So yes. <laughs> anyway, thank you for listening to me. So I'm not ready to travel as I thought it would be, but um, we're going to still do this. It'll, you know, be interesting and a little more challenging, but there are ways and I'm, you know, um, headset on enjoying myself anyway and not getting too down and not dwelling on the fact that I'm not um, smaller. I'm not in better shape. And um, inshallah, we will still have a good time. So anyways, um, that's it for now. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. So I do think that overall, she has a good message at the end there. And for her condition and everything that she's shown us that she's going through and just how her health has declined, it is kind of impressive to me that she is able to do what she does. I think we would see a huge shift in her if she decided to start losing a little bit of weight and putting herself out there and having like travel as the motivation is a great thing for that. But I just don't think we're ever going to get to that point with her. Unfortunately, she does have a good message of not letting things like that hold you back if you really want to travel you should travel but just do it smart and choose destinations that are going to work for you for where you're at at the moment i've flown to uh, cincinnati ohio before just for lunch and had a fabulous time went to the museum there and walked around it was so much fun and it just goes to show like you you can have fun anywhere even if it's just a little trip or you just start exploring your own city more or your where you live more just to start practicing getting out and doing different things it's always even a great first step that is all i have for foodie i'm gonna go finish getting ready really quick and then i'll just do like the after for you guys because i know it's really unsatisfying to not see the finished product here so give me one second i'll be right back okay guys here is the final look um did the braid so I can have the little braid waves and just pretty simple makeup. All in all, I think honestly that glitter and lasers is going to have better plus size travel tips if you are looking for those kind of things. I do see a little bit of shift in Chantal making content a little less selfish and um, trying to help other people. Not quite there yet, I don't think, but it is more interesting and better shift, I think, when it comes to her travel videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.